everyone! So today's video is going to be about all of the books that I read last year because I did quite a lot of reading, mostly like in the second half of the year and I just really wanted to talk about books because I haven't like made a video about books I think since 2019 probably. I'm gonna be looking at my phone a lot because I have a lot of notes on all of these that I have been like recording over the year. I am not going to talk too much about what each book is about just because this is already gonna be a really long video like I just know it so I think I'd like be doubling the length of this if I was to talk about what the book was about and what I thought of it so I'm just gonna talk about what I thought of each book also I finally have gotten myself a Goodreads account so if you want like more in-depth reviews about these particular books we'll have probably more detailed stuff on there. Feel free to add me on there if you want, but I'll leave a link to my Goodreads in the description. Yeah, and if you want to look it up, it's just Raven of the Woods, it's the same as my YouTube. One more thing I should let you know is that over half of these books are about fairies, <laughs> um, so I'm gonna try and leave most of the fairy books for like the second half of the video. So I'm just gonna get started with like the first book I'm looking at. The first book is Switched by Amanda Hocking. Luckily this was second hand so it's not as much of a disappointment but this book was absolutely terrible. This is one of the worst things I've ever read. I detest it so much. First of all, I mean you can probably tell just by the cover that it's like one of those young adult paranormal romance sort of novels. I guess most of those aren't great but this one was particularly bad and I've actually read like a lot of young adult paranormal romance because it was something I used to really enjoy when I was like 14, 15 and this is the worst one I have read. It's written really badly, there are so many grammatical errors and confusing sentences that don't actually make sense in here. It's also really repetitive. The storyline is terrible, so spoiler warning by the way, but I don't know why I'd want to read it anyway. It's meant to be about changelings, that's what I read in the blurb, so I'm like, oh cool, like, fairies. Great. Then by chapter three you find out that it's not fairy changelings. The main character is a troll, <laughs> which... I don't know, I like, yeah, trolls are cool, but if they wanted to include that in this, I feel like they should have done it a lot better, like, it was bad. But the insta-love in this is kind of ridiculous, and also, the main character just, like, falls in love with every male she sees, basically. Like, every guy she comes across, she has the hots for. And the language that she uses to describe it, and that also includes people that are meant to be, like, royalty or aristocrats, Thing like that. They use terms like gonna, as in I'm gonna, <laughs> foxy, and creepy. They love the word creepy and foxy in here and it's embarrassing to read, like I cringe so much when I read that. And that all the characters have that similar language as well really bothers me because it's like are they all actually the same character or are they gonna be different? It's like the ridiculous love triangles. And along with that as well is this constant thing, I've noticed it in a lot of novels like this but this one was really notorious for it, is all of the abusive behaviours in relationships that just get completely glossed over and excused because the boyfriend is like a paranormal creature or whatever. He's a supernatural creature and so that somehow gives him the excuse to treat everyone like shit. It's kind of the takeaway I got from this. And I'm really sick of it. I hate it. And there's three more of them and I'm not reading them. They were shite. The next one that I read is How to Vegan. This is by Stephen Wildish. This was like a really quick read and I did enjoy it. Even though it says How to Vegan, which makes you think it'd be like for beginners or for people that aren't vegan yet but they want to be, it's a little bit misleading and I don't think that's intentional but I really felt like this was more for people that have been vegan for like a year or two because it has a lot of sort of inside jokes that is like common in the vegan community and stuff. There's a lot of satire and a lot of it you'd kind of I feel like you'd be a bit lost with as a newbie to be honest and there's like a lot of pictures and diagrams and stuff as well and I got through it really quickly I think I read it in about a day I reckon and I'd definitely read it again just because of like how light-hearted it is and everything like it isn't very heavy the next one is Marina by Carlos Ruiz Zafon I don't think I've said that right but I tried 
I don't have a lot to say about this one. I liked it. It's not my most favourite book I've ever read. But I actually started reading this back in 2018 and then I put it down like halfway through just unintentionally I didn't mean to and then I picked it up again um, last year because I just really wanted to finish it so I don't actually remember a huge amount about this book but what I did read of it last year when I finished it was really beautiful but it was very sad and a little bit confusing <laughs> like things sort of get really unrealistic near the end which probably would have made more sense if I stuck to the book and read it all the way through without having a break for a few years in between so that was probably my own doing. It's written well, it's very like Moorish but not my favourite so yeah. Next we have another book that I hate. So this book I have quite mixed feelings about and I don't intend on keeping it. I'm going to donate this after this video. I guess I'll mention the things I liked about it first and then I'll kind of let you down with the bad news at the end. <laughs> so I did like how this was written, the style it was written. I liked a lot of the atmospheric parts in it. It also has roots in Frankenstein which I quite liked. I also felt like I picked up on a bit of groom in there as well but it wasn't actually mentioned in the book. I liked that the main character was really well read even though he was only like 17 or 18. That pleased me. Another thing that I really appreciated was that there were LGBT characters in here but it was just treated normally like the author didn't make a big deal of it. It was just mentioned in passing and it was like a normal accepted thing among all of the characters and I really appreciated that. Also one of the characters that comes along in this is like really mis mysterious and dark and he has like a really obscure history that you don't really know much about and like you sort of start questioning like whether he's even human and stuff like that. That was like the main thing that kept me going through the book that I was like curious about. Now for the bad news, um, this book is full of incest. <sighs> It was extremely uncomfortable to read. I feel like I should have picked up sooner on the fact that it would include these themes because there was a mention I think in the blurb somewhere about it like drawing on aspects of Freud and Oedipus but it still took me by surprise and the fact that it's not just in there once it's in there multiple times throughout the book like it's a very common theme and it's like really graphic. It involves underage people and adults, let's just say, and it was disgusting. I'm actually really, really surprised that I managed to finish this. As I said, the main thing that kept me going through this book was wanting to know more about Rome, who was the mysterious kind of Frankenstein's monster inspired character. But I kind of regret finishing this, like, so I'm gonna be redonating this soon. Even having this in my house bothers me don't read this. Okay, the next one is Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. I didn't actually know until like a few years ago that Howl's Moving Castle was a book. I always thought it was just the movie but it's a book as well and there's actually more books in this series which I need to read but I really really enjoyed this. It was really good. The main thing that I took away from this was how much more complex the characters are in the book versus the movie which I mean it always goes that way but still struck me as something very noticeable so Hal is like a very well-rounded character but he's definitely a lot more selfish kind of game playing especially in terms of like romantic stuff but you still end up like having quite a fondness for him anyway despite that which is kind of clever in itself making someone really frustrating but also making you enjoy them as a character anyway also Sophie was a lot more like capable in this book versus the movie she had like a lot more magical ability I guess which I don't want to like spoil for you guys but it does come on really soon in the book where she sort of talks magic into the clothes that she's selling like her hats and stuff like that. And also Turnip Head, he has like a lot more history and uh, complexities to him than he did in the movie. He's got a lot more character in the book. I didn't mean to like spend the whole time talking about this book and comparing it to the movie but that's the best way that I can describe 
all of it. The next book is Runaway Max by Brennan Yovanoff, which hopefully I said right. I quite enjoyed this. I would read it again, but there are a few things that I have like little problems with. So one thing is that the author says the word dangerous way too often. She says it like probably twice on every page and that kind of bothered me. It had a good effect at first, but when she just kept using that word, it lost its meaning and it just kind of made the whole experience a bit less immersive to be honest. I also found that there was too much talk of the past rather than the present, but looking back I think it's actually meant to be like that because it's sort of giving you the history of character Max, but I do wish they'd spent more time in the present as well and like talking about everything from Max's perspective because that was what I enjoyed the most. There was also a lot of backstory about Gilly as well in this of course, some really disturbing stuff to do with him too. So like big trigger warning if you happen to read this, there's a lot of domestic violence, physical, emotional, verbal abuse, all of that stuff. I really enjoyed that this added some more imagination and history to Max and her family as well. But I did find that, again, there was like too much talk of the past and it sort of went back into these little, I guess, stories or recollections that Max has or remembers, I suppose. And it happens like three times throughout every chapter because it's like going back and forth from the present and the past and everything a lot and it just gets a bit confusing and it kind of makes the story and stuff lose its meaning a bit. I'm gonna put this down because it's hurting my hand and it's probably distracting but I did still enjoy it and I think I finished the book in like three days probably which is really good for me. I also got it because I knew who the author was. She also wrote The Replacement which I really liked. Next book I want to show you guys which I absolutely adored was an Enter Shikari book. If you don't know, Enter Shikari is a band that like one of my favourite bands. So this is called Dear Future Historians and this is the lyrics and exegesis of Rao Reynolds for the music of Enter Shikari 2006 to 2019. That was a mouthful, but yeah. Basically this was written by Rao Reynolds who is the front man for Enter Shikari and it just basically talks about all of the songs that they've written. It's got like all of the lyrics to each song and then most of them have an essay about them, but not all of them. And it's organised in albums that are in like chronological order. It also has a lot of like colour photos and stuff of the band, which I really like. I think my favourite chapter was um, for their album The Mind Sweep. That one like really moved me a lot to be honest. I actually had to put the book down halfway through that chapter because I had to stop and process everything that was being talked about in there because it was actually really intense and it was giving me a bit of an existential breakdown. All of those really big questions that we have throughout life, it was making me question everything and I'm like, okay, I need to put this down for a minute, this is too much. This was like my favorite book that I read last year. It was beautiful. I'm a bit biased about this because I love Into Shikari so much, so of course I'm gonna say it's incredible and everyone should read it. Rao's writing and his ideas and perception and everything on the world in general is always presented with like a lot of empathy and intelligence. I got some new perspectives on how I view things whilst reading this book. Next we have All the Birds Singing by Evie Wilde. I enjoyed the style that it was written in. Again, I thought it was very Moorish, a lot like Marina. I liked the atmosphere, I thought that was cool, but it also really bothered me. One thing that bothered me was that every second chapter you like go back in time. So one chapter will be in the present and then the next one will be in the past and it will like keep repeating that pattern which is really confusing for the first few chapters because you don't really know what's going on like there's no explanation for that. And also every second chapter, the one that's in the past, 90% of the time it involves a lot of sex scenes which if you know me it really really isn't my thing like I'm asexual, I'm just not interested in that and I I'm like borderline repulsed by it to be honest, but that's just me, like no shame if you're into that, but it wasn't for me. Again, I kind of stuck around for this to see what would happen in the end because there's this thing going on with a creature coming onto the main character's farm and like eating the sheep. It's like meant to be a big scary beast or something. That was like the main thing that kept me going with this. But then in the end, on the last freaking page, they see whatever the thing is that's eating the sheep, but they don't tell you what it is. They just say, oh shit, and then that's it. That's the end. You never find out what was eating the sheep. 
And the reason that I read it was to find out and I never did and it really frustrated me. Again, trigger warning for this, there's like a lot of abuse, sexual abuse, physical abuse, animal abuse, child abuse, like violence, it's... Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm not keeping this book. I, I half enjoyed it, I enjoyed the atmosphere and the mystery of whatever was eating the sheep, but the rest, not for me. And so now we are going on to all of the fairy related books, and there's a lot of them. This video is already really long so I need to try and speed it up more, but uh, this was going to be a long video from the start. I read Stardust by Neil Gaiman. I read the novel version of this, so the one without the illustrations. But I liked it so much that I ended up purchasing the one that does have the illustrations. They're all like coloured and everything, which is really cool. So I'm definitely going to reread this at some point, just so I can enjoy like the full colour experience. I did find this book a bit slow at times, because there's like a lot of travelling in it and stuff, and sometimes you just kind of want the characters to get on with it. It reminded me of a mix of like Grimm's fairy tales with a bunch of fairy stuff blended in there. So I enjoyed it and then I watched the movie afterwards as well and I thought that was good too. So that was Stardust. Next I have a couple of Brian Froud books. So I've actually had these on my shelf to read for ages and I finally got around to them. These are both from the Lady Cottington's Pressed Fairy series. So I'd already read the first book. So the next one in that that I read was Lady Cottington's Fairy Album. And this has a bunch of photographs in it and stuff and obviously with the illustrations too. Yeah. get the idea. I quite enjoyed that. I don't remember everything that happened in the first book. This kind of had its own storyline to it as well so you probably could read it as like a standalone but it does make more sense if you've read first one. And then the other one that I read from that series was Lady Cottington's Pressed Fairy Letters. So this has like a bunch of letters from like well-known authors mostly. There's other people in there that are well-known that are not authors. But obviously like they're not real letters, they're just made up to sound like they are from those people. And also of course it includes illustrations and stuff. Yeah but it had like I think letters from Oscar Wilde who's like one of my favourite authors, Harry Houdini in there as well. It had, who's the guy that wrote Peter Pan? J.M. Barry, I think? Or at least it was one of his characters, maybe it was Wendy who wrote in here. I liked seeing a lot of the people and characters and stuff that I recognised from other works and stuff in there. Having said that, this didn't have as strong of a storyline as the other two pressed fairy books that I've read, so it really only makes sense and is more enjoyable if you've read those other previous two. Next we have another fairy book. This is Knife by R.J. Anderson and actually I found out that Brian Froud illustrated the fairy on the front. I haven't actually written any notes about this one because I just didn't get around to it but it was really good. I really enjoyed it. Again I liked that it had references to some fairy folklore like not saying thank you because it's considered kind of impolite. I can't remember if this said whether or not you can or can't say sorry. I know they don't like that. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's still like massively unrealistic compared to like the really old original folklore around fairies. There are more books in this series as well, but I haven't read them yet because they're a bit hard to find. This is another favourite from last year, Wildwood Dancing by Juliette Marillia. I adored this book so much, it was so beautiful. I know it's like based off of a particular old fairy tale, maybe like 12 dancing princesses or something. It was really really good. It was really beautiful. It was emotional. It made me cry. Like a really in-depth world with really well-rounded characters. Definitely found that each character had like so much life poured into them. Each one was so unique and you definitely like think that they're real people. I really fell in love with the Wildwood and all of the fair folk. Even the ones that were like not not good people I guess, even them I really enjoyed. Also there were vampires in this too, they go by a different name, the author calls them night people and I thought they were really cool as well because they were like part of the fair folk in a way, they were sort of a guest in the wildwood which is what the fair folk, I don't want to say they own it but that's like their home and the night people are a guest there and then the humans they are guests there as well. It's all a bit You'll have to read it yourself to see what I mean, it's very intricate, I think. And like every single thing you see on the cover, like every little detail is actually 
relevant and is part of the book and I thought that in itself is really cool because I read about it in the book and then I looked for it on the cover and I'm like oh it's just like how they described it that's really cool hopefully that all made sense I know that was like a bit of a jumbled mess because I got really excited talking about it because this is like my new favorite book but it was really really beautiful I highly recommend reading it we have Heretic by Sarah Singleton this is another one with fairies it just I think has yeah it has like a fairy girl in it who's like a green tinged person <laughs> she meets a human and they sort of become friends and stuff and then there's also fairies that are called the crow people and that was all really interesting learning about their world and where they come from and how they can pass between like the human world and the fairy realm I guess but there wasn't enough of that like there was too much of the human world and it just felt really mundane slow dry boring like I really wanted to learn more about the crow people and the fairies and where they come from and everything and like that whole story there was like a bit too much talk about religion for my liking it just took the focus away from the fairies which is what I was really interested in and I kind of found it like a bit boring hearing all about the religious side if you're into that it might be something that you enjoy and then you you might like this book more than I did I feel like this story has a lot of potential but not all of it was brought to fruition I guess this one was really short this is The Changeling by Terry Windling Terry Windling I don't know he does a lot of fairy stuff though so The Changeling is just a wonderful like really short read it was filled with a lot of old fairy folklore which I really liked and a lot of spooky happenings in the forest and hills it had a lot of emotion in it and it was really beautifully written I don't have like a lot to say about it because it was so short and it's got like really a big font as well last book an Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. This book, I mostly enjoyed it, but I have a few problems with it as well. So the imagery and landscapes described in this were really magical. They were so cool. There was like giants that were covered in moss. They had mushrooms for eyes and their voices sounded like bark. Like stuff like that. The way they described fairy blood was really cool. Like it's this sort of clear sparkly I guess like a liquid but a bit thicker than blood and if it dropped on the ground then it would grow like big trees and stuff oh another thing I liked was that instead of just having the sealy and unsealy court which is a little bit overused in fairy literature in my opinion they had seasonal courts instead so there was the winter court summer court spring court and autumn court also I really liked that the author made the fair folk like the same height as humans and there was like no mention of pointed ears or wings or anything it was like in that sense a bit more realistic to what fairies probably actually are it felt a bit like i was just hanging out with a bunch of Anne rice vampires like the main fairy in this he reminded me a lot of lestat de lioncourt which i still don't know how i feel about that but it's something i noticed something that really bothered me about this though was all of the damsel in distress moments it really got on my nerves because it was so frequent and it's like the main character can't do anything for herself just ignore my cat if you can hear him it's nearly his dinner time so he's a bit whingy the main character Isabel she's always like relying on one of the fair folk especially Rook to like rescue her and it happens a lot and it bothers me and it's like can this girl do anything for herself just using her normal human powers can she just like take care of herself a little bit because it seems not it's like she just can't even think for herself it's really annoying so i am coming to you from a different angle now i'm not sure if you noticed but the last clip got cut off too soon my camera overheated and so it just stopped recording and it didn't tell me it does that a lot <laughs> but i really need to get a new camera for filming so i'm currently filming this with my phone because i really want to finish this and i don't want to wait for my camera to cool down I don't know how long this video got but uh, I think I spent like 55 minutes filming so hopefully it's not going to be that long <laughs> in the end when I'm done editing but there might be quite a few jump cuts to try and shorten things down so I hope that's cool with you guys. Yeah let me know if you've read any of these before or you plan to and also like what your favourite books were that you read last year. 
be very interested to find out and also if you have any fairy book recommendations let me know. I am currently reading a lot of Holly Black books especially her old stuff actually even though I know it's not as good as her new stuff. That is what I'm focusing on right now. I think that's it so thank you for watching this extremely long video and I do hope you enjoyed it and go add me on Goodreads if you have one. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.